All right, guys, it is opening week of trout season here in New Jersey. I was just looking around at a bunch of different spots, checking if there's some trout stocked, but uh, I think this spot might be pretty good. I got a few that I'm gonna try here out today. And uh, yeah, very excited. So I've got a fly and spinning rod with me here today because you never know what they're gonna bite on the river. It changes every year. So usually opening day, opening week, I like to be prepared to throw just about anything for these guys. I actually was able to get out yesterday after work and got into my first trout of the season. And this year is interesting because I got there to the first spot and, and those fish were just so finicky. There was just a lot of pressure, a lot of people, and I was able to hook one of those fish but I ended up letting it go because I always try to let the first trout of the season go. So I sent that one back and I didn't catch anything else. So today I'm back out here and hopefully I can get on a trout today. And so I got the new car out here today and uh, just got this a week or two ago, traded in my old Outback, which I had over 150,000 miles on it. And uh, it was a great car. So I went ahead and got another one. This is the uh, Outback Wilderness here. And I'm very excited to uh, see how, how this car does and go on some new adventures with this thing. Very excited about it. All right, so it definitely could be busy out here on opening week. There's probably a lot of uh, other anglers out on the water, so try my best to not be loud and respect them as well out here trying to catch them. But I'll try to uh, narrate what's going on. All right, I'm going to be using a bunch of different things here today, but I'm going to start off with just an olive woolly bugger. This is what I got the fish yesterday on, that first one that I got this season. So might as well just try it again. So I'm starting off with this woolly bugger here. And I'm just going to, there's a lot of leaves, it makes it hard to cast, but I'm just going to cast it upstream. Let it sink a little bit and just slowly strip it back. See, I like to come prepared with a few different options because if they're not biting, sometimes I throw on a little jerk bait like this just to get a reaction bite. This is a uh, Rapala HJ6. I use this a lot in the fall for the bigger trout and sometimes they can get angry and just bite it. So I'll just kind of cast it out, slowly retrieve it back, and I like to give the rod a few twitches. Man, so I'm seeing a few trout. There's a few swimming in that pool right there, but I've tried a bunch of lures and flies and they're not biting anything. I think they're too spooked right now. So I'm gonna try a little bit longer, but if not, I think I'm gonna move. All right guys, so I'm out under another bridge. Um, in the fall, I would highly suggest focusing your efforts underneath bridges. Uh, it doesn't matter what river or stream you guys like to fish, but anywhere here in New Jersey, a bridge is a great spot to start because it's a very easy spot for them to stock the fish. Usually they just dump them right off the top sometimes. So in the fall, I usually like to, or in the spring as well, just cover a bunch of different bridges and uh, see if you can get any fish to bite. See if it produces. It's like I'm like almost out here in the middle of the river to get to the one part that is deep enough to hold fish. That's been the problem with the fall. That's why this uh, stocking was delayed this year because they were trying to see if we were gonna get some rain for some better water levels. Oh, I think I got a few spots I need to cover. This water is definitely a little too low here. All right. I took a 40 minute drive, spot change to get to this spot. Got maybe 45 minutes left of sunlight. Gosh, I hope they're biting here. Man, it's all the, all the leaves are making it so hard to fish. snagged and can't even get a lure underneath it and a little tough today not much time left but hey you never know I'm gonna keep looking around man what a day it's been it's just been I've been driving around 
spot hopping, looking for trout. This is probably the sixth or seventh pit stop for trout today. Yep, a lot of the same deal here. Just really calm water. And I just don't think they put in fish here. It's been tough because just with no rain, the water's low. And I think they might have just skipped over some of these spots. Yep. I think that's where I call it for today. Definitely took the L on this one, but hey, there's another day tomorrow. I think I'm gonna get out to a different river after work and check out those spots. Maybe it'll produce up there. So let's see. See, sometimes the hardest part about trout fishing is finding the trout. So if you're new to this, you may have to just map out a bunch of different spots on the river that you plan to fish. That might help you locate some fish. Plan out a few pit stops, and then you know you can just make them along the way. Okay guys, I found them. There's a few fish right here. Okay. I left the other camera in the car because I wasn't sure if this is going to be a quick spot. But this bridge, this water is so low. But I found some right here. Salmon egg, which is a tiny split shot. Just one. Got him. Oh, God. That was all me. He ate it. Oh, gosh. How could I miss them? Oh, man. All right. I'm pretty positive this will do it. Got a jerk bait tied on, and I think I can get these fish to have a little reaction strike. So let's see. Oh yeah, I think I can get them to bite this. They're all looking at it. Oh no! I bet you a trout has that in his mouth now. There we go. First one right here. Oh man, there he is. Barely hooked. Got her. Okay, on the jerk bait. That's a pretty good one. All right. Swiped at it. All right, we're gonna take that for dinner. Just gonna bonk it right now. Yes, did it. Just gonna bleed him out. Finally got one to commit out of that pool on the little jerk bait. Just kind of, once you find the fish, be prepared to just try different things out to see what they like. So I'm just kind of casting this out there. Slow retrieve with just a few twitches. Just to kind of give that jerk bait a little bit of action in the water. Once they see it too many times though, I don't think they're gonna bite. All right. That's a good one too, man. It's a nice trout. Get him on the stringer. All right, let's try drifting the woolly bugger.
I don't think the fly rods are gonna get them to bite here today. It's more of a reaction strike. All right, got the other camera now. So I was actually right up there and I cast it downstream. And I got them to bite that jerk bait. Oh, there's a few fish in here. A lot more willing to chase than the fish I saw yesterday underneath the other bridge. You know, I haven't tried any, any spinners yet. Maybe that's worth a shot. Let's go with this little black rooster tail. Toss that out there, get the blade to start to spin and just slow retrieve. This is where I was when I caught the first one. Come on, buddy. Oh, God, he ate it, too. I think my hook set's too early. All right, it's getting late now. I don't know if I'm going to get any of these, more of these trout to bite. Finally found him, though, underneath this bridge. That's it. Got to call it. That's it for this trip. All right, so I tried using spinners, jerk baits, trout magnets, woolly bugger, a bunch of trout in that pool, and I got one to bite on the jerk bait. But see, the thing about the false stocking is you have an opportunity to get into some much nicer sized trout. This guy's probably like, I don't know, 14 inches or so, but if you're able to get a few of these, you got a pretty dang good meal. So I'll definitely be out here again. Going to take this one guy back so at least we have something to do a catch and cook with. But I'm either going to cook this up or I'll be actually back out here very soon. All right, day three here now. And today's conditions feel different. It's sunny still. It's really nice out, but it's definitely colder. This morning it was only around 40 degrees. I think it's hovering around closer to 50 today. So today is a little bit cooler and uh, maybe that'll change it a little bit for the trout. It's also a, a few days later and the trout have had a chance to kind of settle in a little bit. Maybe they're not as spooked anymore, we'll see. So this morning I'm starting off looking at a new stretch of river. I'm just gonna take a look real quick and see if there's any fish. I might try for a little bit or move to another spot. I've probably checked over a dozen spots over the past few days. So uh, I have a few more on the list that I want to check out today also. Uh, not really seeing a whole bunch here. I could have skipped over this spot also. Even talking with some guys back at the parking lot, how a bunch of spots got skipped over because of the water. It's crazy. This water is so incredibly low. And there's a few trout sitting right on the edge of the pool. You can literally see everything that's going on here. So this is so shallow. I'm just going to use a salmon egg with no weight. See if I could drift it right in front of their face right there at the end. I see one trout. Oh, I keep on trying to sight fish that fish. And I got him to bite one time, but I missed it. Now, that trout is 100% interested in the woolly bugger. Let's see if I can get him to bite it. Come on, eat it. Eat it. There it is. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. Chase the woolly bugger. Finally, man. Oh, ho, ho, ho. gosh. It's a nice one, too. Come on, buddy. This way. Yeah. Okay. Wow. 
another morning of struggling. I just got another nice one. Heck yeah. A woolly bugger right in his mouth. That's what you want. Got him bleeding out there in the water. I was able to sight fish that guy right out of the pool right here on the woolly. Man, day three ended up being a little bit of a grind also. I hopped around a few spots and found some fish, got that one guy to bite. But I think just the theme is they're just, for my, my experience uh, this season, is they're just very finicky at multiple locations. But anyways, we got that fish there. I got the other one back in the fridge at home and I'm gonna be cooking them up. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing and how to cook them up right about now. I've got a quick and easy recipe that I'm doing here today. I'm gonna flay the trout right now and then sear it and serve it over a bacon leek mushroom mix with some roasted smashed potatoes. Hopefully it's really good. I'm gonna start filleting these guys right now. So I got the two trout here. This is the one I actually caught on the second day. This guy here I caught today. And I'll uh, show you how I like to fillet them. Super easy. So the trout are all cleaned up. I'll make my first cut right here above the collarbone. Do it again on this side. Once you got them gutted, it's very easy to just take the knife, run it along the spine. You'll need to just get it started a little bit to go through those rib bones. And then once you get through that, you're just gonna follow it all the way down. So now after that you got to take the rib bones out and you can see them sticking up right there. And I usually just take the knife, get right under them, just slowly just work it around it. This is going to be where most of the bones are at in this fish. Get all those bones out. And I'll just trim it out here where the fins are. Then I'm just gonna take the skin off this fish. You can leave it on, but I'm gonna sear it without it today. Trout's a very thin skin as, as it is, so if you bake it or Throw it on the grill, usually it gets crispy and you could eat it. But I usually take it off sometimes. And the last thing you gotta do is take the pin bones out. And there's a ton of them that run right here. And so usually you could either cut them out or if you have the time, you can use tweezers. I'm not gonna do that here, I'm just gonna cut it out. Just gonna go take a cut down there. And then, so that's it. So if it was a bigger trout, I probably would have used tweezers and deboned it. But these like 14 inch or so trout, I usually just cut it out because the bones are just a little too small and there's so many of them to try to get out of the filet. So I just cut them out like that. Let's start off uh, roasting up these potatoes. Drizzle them with a little olive oil. Salt and pepper, little garlic powder, got some fresh rosemary, take that off the sprig, give that a little chop. It's going to save a little bit for the end too. Potatoes are going to go in the oven, air fryer, whatever you got. This is 400 degrees until they are nice and golden. I'm going to take some bacon, just dice this up. All right, bacon goes in first. I've got some leeks. 
Now, I'm not gonna use the green part here today. I'll save that for soup or something if I make it this week. Check in there, and this is actually a pretty clean leak, but I'll give it a little rinse. I'm gonna save that for later. I'll use this for today. I'm gonna use some of the green parts. got end of the woods mushroom that I'm going to use in this also. This is a really great seasonal mushroom in the fall. I got this at the store, taking the core out and then I'm just going to cut it into just little sections. It'll kind of just flake away on its own. All right, bacon's getting crispy. I'm going to push it all to one side. Use that fat. I'm gonna put those leaks in there. I'm not gonna add any salt right now, but a little black pepper. And the good thing about this is these are all things that are gonna soak up that bacon fat. The leeks are gonna soak it up, the mushrooms, those absorb a lot of it. I think it's time to toss this all together. Let's give it a little bit of mix. All right, so this is pretty much done now. The last thing I want to do is just hit this with just a little bit of maple syrup. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna give these just a little, little smash. Use a little ramekin. Now I'm just gonna drizzle them one more time. A little more olive oil. A little salt to get actually in there on the potato and then the rest of the rosemary. And then these go back in the oven until they get nice and crispy. And then they're done. Now the last thing is the trout, which I'm just gonna season it nicely with just salt and pepper. Keep it nice and light. A little bit of grapeseed oil in here, or canola, high temperature oil. All right, that looks nice and hot. probably cook it most of the way on just this one side. Let's give this a flip. Add some rosemary in there. A little bit of butter. Kind of give it a little base. Got the crispy potatoes. And the trout. Kind of fell apart a little bit without the skin, but we're just gonna to top it with the bacon. Bacon mushroom leek. And there it is, that's a quick meal right there. Got the roasted smashed potatoes, the bacon maple leek with the trout. That's gonna be good. It's honestly not the most visually appealing thing ever, but I bet you it's gonna be, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna I be mean, tasty. It it's gonna be tasty. It's just, you know, the color. So it's, it's very dark. Mm. That good. Mmm. Trout, bacon, mushroom. I don't think you can go wrong with that. I know. Mmm. Mm hmm. That's good. You know, everything that accompanies this is really good, but. I gotta say, like the fish is the best bite. Mmm. It's the star of the show. The star of the show. It's good. It's good, huh? Really good. It's good. It's very mild. Just a very uh -huh. mild fish. You know. I think you definitely have to serve it with something, you know, to kind of bring it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
for stock trout, not bad. Yeah, I feel like all the flavors of like the leeks and the bacon kind of like infused into the trout. Yeah. So it's really good. Like a good chef would do. Everything's hot too. Hot and ready to eat. Can't tell from here, but everything's hot. Hot. Very good. Well, that's about gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like videos like this, definitely stick around. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the new videos. Got a lot going on this fall, and hopefully we'll be back out there chasing some trout and whatever else bites. So until we catch or cook something else, I'll see you next time on The Line Cook. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>